Hickok 45 doing the old python thing again. Yes, but not in such a big way. Wasn't that funny? This is the four and a quarter inch 2020 Colt Python. Been trying to get my hands on one for a good while. Uh, yeah, I think these are not as uh, plentiful yet as the six inch. I think all of them are still not easy to come by. But we got our hands on this one. You've seen the six inch. We've talked about it. You've seen the comparison and everything. I hope I'll link to it in this video. But I'm glad to try out the uh, the four inch. It's actually four and a quarter. So if I say four inch, what I really mean is four and a quarter. Okay, just just remember that. All right. <laughs> so I want you to see it uh, before I get it dirty. I just cleaned it again. I've been shooting it, and uh, just take a, a good look before I get it all filthy and everything. Isn't that pretty? I didn't necessarily give it the white glove treatment, but I did clean it here after shooting it uh, several times, actually. But uh, looks pretty good. There's something special about a four inch uh, revolver. There's also something special about a three inch revolver, a two inch revolver, and a six inch revolver, like this one. Still got the original one, <laughs> okay? I'm not gonna fire it again, but I, since I hadn't sent it back, uh, it's, it's, it's out here. So anyway, let's shoot this four incher and uh, enjoy it a little bit, okay? I, uh, I really like short barrel revolvers, as you know. And uh, in the Python, I tell you though, it doesn't matter what the barrel length is, it's just a really cool looking revolver. Now, I'm gonna right away move some water around. <laughs> you know, it's trying to rain a little bit and sprinkle, so I'm gonna make my own water. Yeah, why not? <laughs> How about a little uh, pot smoking while it's still dry? Yeah, they don't smoke as well in the rain. <laughs> Do I have one left? If so, I'll put it on the target. Okay. So the four incher, uh, like I said, I'll link to the other one, uh, the other uh, you know 2020 Python video where we compared it. You've already seen those probably. Uh, you better have. And uh, I uh, gave you all the basic information. Uh, some of it I'll go over again. Of course, you've got the, you know, the, these just came out back around what, January or so, and there were a few issues. Apparently, Colts got them worked out, and, uh, you know, they were revealed, one of those issues, you know, in our first video. And uh, that's that gun right there, and I've been shooting it for weeks and weeks now, and it's doing fine. So, apparently... Uh, they have, it went back to Colt, as you, most of you know, and uh, they got that side plate and that screw issue worked out. They got them Loctited down. Apparently if it's loose at all, you know, you can have issues. And then the light primer strikes, there was a small issue with some ammo. Apparently they've got that addressed as well with a little bit stronger mainspring. And uh, they seem good. I've been shooting both of these and with no issues. Now, we may have an issue today. You never know what's gonna happen in a video, do you? Let's shoot some more, okay? But uh, I uh, just wanted to shoot the thing and uh, get the four inch model and see what I think of it. You know, this gun, and one of the things I think about it is, uh, the Python is a fairly hefty gun and it, it's nice. It has enough weight to where in the shorter barrel configurations, especially out the, at least four inch, it still doesn't kick that hard. Right, cowboy? Yeah. You can probably hear, those are magnums. Let's see if the gong likes those magnums. I'm not sure where to hold, am I? Maybe I'm sure. Maybe I'm not, I hit it. You never know whether it's luck or not though, right? You gotta do it twice. I think I'll try a buffalo. I think I went high. I think I went low on that one. Uh, I've shot it a lot. I've not done a lot of, okay, let's figure out uh, whether we can hit a, uh, a two inch plate at 80 yards or anything. But the sights seemed close enough. I didn't move them, didn't want to mess with them. Uh, nice, let's shoot a little 38. See if they uh, print differently. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, quickly again, they beefed up the top strap on the 2020 Python a little bit. You got a little bit different trigger configuration, different grips, a little thinner. You don't have the serration back here. 
you got a serrated hammer spur instead of uh, the knurl that you have on the old python, okay? And just quickly going through some of those, still the adjustable rear sights. You've got a crown recessed here to help protect the, the bore. You got an easier front sight replacement, just this little one screw here that anybody can do, even me. And, uh, you know, they've, they've changed the side plate a little bit. Uh, you've got, you don't have a cylinder stop here that you have on the old pythons, apparently not needed. And the action is different, okay? It's simpler. And one of the, the, the one of the takes or the hits on the old pythons is that uh, it's easier for them to go out of timing. And uh, some people claim that is just not an issue, that's a myth. I'm not really sure. I, I've heard from some gunsmiths that, that it is not a myth, uh, but then I, I don't know. Um, and then these days it's hard to find somebody to work on a, an action like a python and do a really good job on it. So to me that's a positive, as I pointed out, on these guns. Because the action on this one is really, oh there's another pot. The action is really, on the 2020, this one and the other one, it has that same glassy feel to it. Let's try that Buffalo with a 38. <laughs> I got him. Let's try the pig. Oh, I think a little high. I think I'm empty. Yeah. Uh, I didn't go to 38 uh, thinking I'd be easier to hit hit out there or anything. I just thought I'd try try something different. Uh, the uh, it, it's very accurate. I've shot enough, so if I miss everything, it's not you know I, I never blame it on the firearm. It is one of the claims to fame on the Python, four inch, six inch, old ones, and I think even these. They're just supposedly uh, some of the most accurate revolvers made. They're they're famous for that, and. And you know, four inch or six, it's going to be plenty accurate. So uh, there's no doubt about that. And you know, I always want to reach out there a long way, even if it's a firearm I've not worked on or worked with a lot, and figure out where exactly to hold and all that. So anyway, since I have uh, started it, I'm going to finish it. Mr. Buffalo, you're going down. If it takes all six shots. Before I hit you. Where that's going. Okay. That's funny. Uh, I have to look at the video. Those first two sounded like they were hitting steel almost maybe like on the leg or something i don't know and one of the things when you're messing around no charge for this just a little added uh information about shooting like i've been just you know throwing them out there sights are pretty much on i've shot enough to know they're not way off or anything so i, I throw some rounds out there and i miss i said let's try again and i miss and you know maybe you miss three times and and you load up different ammo and you still miss some or whatever Part of the reason that happens is you're not taking it seriously enough. I'm not taking it seriously enough. On those three shots, for example, the first two, I really focused on my hold. I knew where I was holding and I was going for a good trigger break. I was holding about six o'clock, a little bit low on it. And I wanted to see where it hit. And if I didn't hit, I could bring it up a little bit. And that's what I did. Cause I think I missed high on one of those other shots with the other ammo. And uh, so, uh, the one that hit it, I brought it up just a little bit. But the key is, point I'm making is I, I knew where I was holding on those first shots that missed. I was, I was consistent in where I held. I missed both times or else I hit it low or whatever. So I brought it up and I still focused really carefully on my trigger release and where I was holding the sights. I didn't make it a random thing. So that always helps <laughs> when you take it more seriously, okay? All right. No charge for that little lesson. Oh. <laughs> That's the next lesson. You can miss anything, even a close target, when you're not careful. Uh, so anyway, I, I've been shooting both of these a lot. Uh, this one kicks a little more. 
but it's fairly comfortable. So if you're looking for a 2020 Python, you know, or actually even if you're looking for an original Python, an old one, uh, and you're trying to decide between a, a four inch and a six inch, because they're essentially the same, same gun, you're gonna get the same recoil and everything. Uh, it is one firearm that uh, you, don't, you don't dramatically increase your recoil uh, with a shorter barrel. It, it's got a plenty of weight and it still looks good. Now I'm a little funny on a Python. I, uh, I'm not crazy about the two and a half inch models or, or even the three inch as much. I think it's because of that beautiful rib that the, the Python's famous for. The rib is just so distinctive and so cool looking. <laughs> it really is. That's what it's got over the 686, you know, that, that cool rib. And so the more of that rib, <laughs> in some ways, the better it looks, you know. So you need a little barrel, in my opinion, to take advantage of one of the coolest things about the python, you know. Now, you may not feel that way, but when I see pythons at gun shows and, a, you know, it'll be someone a collector, he's got them in all barrel links and everything. He's got one at $4,000, nickel plated or whatever, beautiful. And it's got a two and a half inch barrel. It, I don't know, it's just not as appealing to me for some reason. I like that, that barrel ridge. Can I shoot a little bit more before we get rained out here? No, that's mainly what I wanted to tell you. I don't have a lot of, no, a lot of other, uh, <laughs> a lot of other wisdom. Do I have any wisdom? Uh, you know, it, it's true to the, the original Python, I think, enough, as I've said a couple of times now. They've got the problems fixed. they got those screws really locked down. And we've not had any issues since we got that one back with either of these guns. I've shot them a fair amount, several different times. Uh, you've seen them in the Sunday shoot-arounds, and you may still see them in the Sunday shoot-around before I send them back. And I, I've been trying to get a lot of rounds through them. They just, they're just working. and. Uh, I have to say, I, I am impressed with how Colt jumped on it and fixed it. Uh, apparently, now if you're still having problems or you bought one in the last, whatever, week or two and you're having uh, issues with it, you know, let us know. I'm sure you will. It's on the, on the web. I've not noticed, as I've mentioned before, a lot of continued problems with them. It seems, it's just my impression, it was mainly the early ones. And mine was, that one was really early. It's 2000. 14 is the uh, serial number, so I'm assuming that's a really early number, and uh, so I think they uh, they've addressed the issues, and they're pretty cool guns. And I shot the target once, but I don't see the hole. What I do? Miss the whole target? I'm gonna shoot it again. I don't even see that one. Oh, okay, there it is. Where's that first hole? Oh, there it is. It was in the blue. I, uh, you know, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't losing my mind. Because uh, I can make some bad shots sometimes, but uh, I normally don't miss something that big, uh, that close. All right, we got two liters need have not have been addressed. Oh, I see a pig directly behind that one. I doubt that I can get them both, but. <laughs> the two liter throws it off course, of course. Of course. I'm smoking too much pot. Somebody's gonna report me. Uh, All right, so I kind of pointed out the differences. Uh, I've linked to the other ones. The action, like I said, it's smooth. Boy, double action, they're both just smooth as glass, a single action. Very, very smooth. That's the thing that surprised me. They're, they really have duplicated, uh, I don't know what percentage you'd want to say, 90%, you know, 95%, the old Python. You know, there's, there's a difference. There's a few I've pointed out. But the actions are nice. The double action is fine. I mean, I, I guess it feels about the same. Might be a little smoother. I, I can't tell much difference. And that's the thing that most people have noticed and been a little bit surprised about, that Colt has been able to make this thing, even with the negatives, uh, look like the Python, feel like it, uh, action wise and, and just about every way so so I am I'm bragging on it the ne the negatives still to me 
or the grip is too thin, but you know those can be replaced. Uh, the hammer spur is not quite as cool. You know, it's it's fine though. You get a good grip on it. And one of the worst things, you know, are the, the serial number out here on the frame and the uh, UDI code, whatever it is, having that on there. It'd be nice if they could have left all that off or put it under the grips or, you know, uh, right here would have been a nice big flat place to put, <laughs> right? Uh, since it's a python, the roll marks are fine. They're a little different. Uh, so there are some things that are different, but most of the differences as I've been saying, are not all that obnoxious to me at all. The, uh, you know, not really not. I can change out the grips, and the old grips fit on them, by the way. I've tried that. And I could uh, get some sandpaper and sand that down really smooth. Yeah. Except I'd end up in prison, wouldn't I, if I sanded it off the serial number. I better not sand that off. I don't know if it's on the uh, under the grip or not, but I better not mess with the serial number. You don't want to do that, okay, in case you didn't know. That was... That was a joke. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are people who are going to continue to trash them, no doubt. But, uh, you know, I, it, it's not that far off, the python. It's just a kind of a reintroduction of the python. It's like over the Smith & Wesson when you go from a 686, and we won't, we'll do maybe a separate video comparing that. But the 686-3 up to 686-6 or something. There's going to be a few tweaks, a few differences, and I don't see it really any different from that. Thankfully, there's no locking hole in it, in the frame, okay? So uh, don't bash the Python too much if you're not bashing, you know, the Smith & Wesson. Uh, if I were going to buy, you know, I did buy a new, and I'm not going to talk about it in this video much, but at all, but this 686, you know, recent, well, kind of recently, because I didn't think these were ever going to come in. Because I told you before, I was ready to buy one of these probably. And, uh, but, you know, they're so long in coming. And I got to looking around, and I found this baby, 4 inch uh, 686. And you know what? I think that'll satisfy my itch. <laughs> and it is a really nice uh, revolver. Uh, it'd be a tough for me to choose between these two. I, I like them. I could, I could take this gun and change out the grips. That is really nice grips on it. Get some fatter grips on this. And uh, it'd be a tough choice, be a tough choice. This is a little more expensive. But uh, so anyway, that's my take. There's some negatives, uh, but uh, they're pretty minor. And I am, uh, I am, I am pleased. I thought I said in the very first video before we had the problem with the gun, uh, I was going on about how uh, I didn't even want to open the box because I'm more of a Smith person, really. Uh, Smith & Wesson when it comes to these types of revolvers, but I've always liked the Python. I've owned four or five myself back through the years, even before that one. And uh, I always end up trading them off and uh, because I prefer to shoot the Smiths, just, I don't know, to me, I, I shoot them better. You know, I like the cylinder latch better and the feel of the grips better and all that. So I'd always end up trading them off. Uh, but uh, I tell you what, uh, that that's a nice Python. and. Uh, you know, you can criticize it, but it's, uh, it's, you know, for, for around $1,500, I'm surprised they were able to do it, to tell you the truth. And to me, one of the pluses, again, is the action being simpler, because even though, ironically, I had a problem with that, apparently that was mainly just the screw in the side plate. Uh, yeah, the fact that it is a simpler action is very, very appealing. You know, and if I were buying uh, if I wanted a really nice gun to go out and shoot a great deal and I wanted a python because I love the looks of them and the feel I and money was not an object at all I would probably buy this new one over the old one okay because I, I don't trust the actions to withstand you know hundreds and hundreds or thousands of rounds without needing some tuning I, I really don't plus you wouldn't want to mess up an old one anyway vintage but uh, so the simpler action to me is a real plus and uh, she's pretty well. Let me shoot six and I'm going to let you go, okay? And uh, that's it. I don't know of any other lies to tell you about it. I uh, pointed out the negatives and the positives and uh, the four inch uh, might be what's, as far as whether you want the six or the four, man, it's tough. It's tough. 
I think most of you probably would be more interested in the four inch. You know, it's a big old revolver in six inches, no doubt about it, because this one's pretty good size. So I would, I would, I would look at this one and uh, feel it, see what you think. The recoil is very manageable. And boy, when you put uh, 38 specials in it, it's a real pussy cat. So since these are the last six I'm going to shoot, I guess I ought to shoot the stop sign somewhere along the way. Hit a bowling pin or two. Paint can, maybe. Bucket. <laughs> Cowboy. And I think it's time to stop. <laughs> With snake eyes, don't you think? Double action is pretty nice on it. Uh, the thing that always gets me in double action on a python, it's hard for me to evaluate them, is because the Smith grips feel better. You know, I get a better grip on them, and so the double action comes off better to me. So I'd need to put some Smith & Wesson grips on this somehow to really evaluate and compare the double action. But it's a good double action. It's smooth. So anyway, you get that nice uh, slick finish uh, on, the, on the trigger, the action that you get on the old pythons, really. Uh, not much difference and uh, pretty nice pretty nice gun i'm glad they're they're doing it even though they had a rocky start and uh, there's things to criticize about it but you know all in all it ain't bad at all and uh, we got us a python back being produced i hope they keep making them so uh, there it is the 2020 python in 4.25 inches in length okay so <sighs> Better check it out if you're a revolver person. You never know. It might be something that you just can't live without. I, I would, if you probably have a gun shop that's not too far from you that rents revolvers and everything under the sun. Uh, once they get some of these in, and you got Smith and Wessons and Taurus and all the various firearms in this configuration, the revolvers, uh, you know, try them all. See what you like. That's the way to do it. So anyway, pretty nice gun. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns uh, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastol.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.